from we'll go ahead and get started. Everybody hear it? Hear this all right? So it's uh, low bandwidth, whatever it's not, it's not streaming, it's just recording. So. Okay, it's recording. So thanks for coming. Uh, did anybody see us last time we were here one year ago in this session? <laughs> they don't know what's going to happen. Has anybody seen one of our webinars where we do this format together? The same one person. <laughs> they really right. don't know what's going to happen. All right. Well, this is, uh, this is kind of fun. This is our seventh, I think. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll see here in a second with, yeah. the, with the stats. But uh, Tom and I, uh, just a really brief history, Tom and I um, you know, have individually have written about productivity tips and done these same types of things for a while. I was looking at kind of expanding out my blog and doing more of these short blog posts, sharing details, examples. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bobby. Um, sharing examples of these productivity tips. And then I came across Tom's blog. I didn't realize he had just started his uh, OneMinuteOfficeMagic.com site. And so I reached out and said, hey, Tom, I'm, like, I'm happy to point people to your site. But you know, we should just kind of do something around this topic, and we, you know, had this idea for this head-to-head -head battle to come out and make it interactive. And of so course, I'm is, sitting there going, yeah. "Oh my God, I get to speak with Christian Buckley. Yeah, I want to do this." <laughs> but it's uh, what's fun about this thing is that we've got the scoreboard over there, and I'll share the stats from our previous sessions uh, in a moment here. But you'll have the chance to vote. What we do is we do five rounds of a head-to-head. -head. Tom and I don't know what the other person is going to present on. Well, actually, you know, I've got the rules I'll come to in that other slide. Why don't we do the introductions really quick? Um, so myself, if you don't know me, so I've been uh, in this space for a long time. I was at, at Microsoft for three and a half years, 2006 to 2009. Um, I've been involved with SharePoint since 2005. Uh, but I've been uh, just a, you know, a, a, a guy focused on collaboration of productivity solutions back since the mid-90s. Uh, and involved in, I think both of us were involved in, uh, so I was actually sold my company to Rational Software in 2001, which then got bought by IBM, and so I was very involved with um, IBM and Rational and uh, a little bit with Lotus, but I was actually an, an early adopter of uh, Groove that was Ray Ozzy's other yes. effort, so we kind of have that tie. But uh, So I run a, a technical marketing services company. I work with ISVs in the space, but I'm uh, and now eight time, eight rings, um, uh, Microsoft MVP, and also a Microsoft Regional Director. Tom? I, on the other hand, do not have any sort of a pedigree of that particular nature, but I can stand in front of this old screen here and will not block your view at all, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a software engineer. I work for a company out in the Pacific Northwest called Tammy Health Solutions. It's an umbrella organization that also includes Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oregon, which is really kind of more of where I'm at. Um, I just moved out here in April, um, but I still work remote back there, so it's really nice. They let me do things like this. Uh, Duffbert on Twitter, on Facebook, if you do search for Duffbert, you'll find me out there. And the blog that he referenced, this one minute office magic, I had started creating these tips internally called it Spark One because Spark's our intranet uh, name. And then I had some people who I'd share occasionally on Facebook and they're like, oh my god, can we get on this list? I'm like, um, no, it's internal. But then I started putting the images together and blocking out things enough that I could share them all external. And that's what One Minute Office Magic became. That's where he found what I was doing. It's like, we need to combine on this. So then and, and so everything that you see here, so part of the rules, of, well, let me go through the rules of engagement, how we did this, what we came up with. So each of us will take turns, we'll do this five rounds head to head. Um, there are no duplicates, meaning that if you ever, if you see us three months from now, we're doing a webinar that has a similar title, we, we kind of come up with the play little name, like the, the uh, Mayhem in Minneapolis. August Anarchy. Right, that kind of stuff. Summertime, what was it, the summertime? Summertime skirmish. Skirmish, yep. Uh, and I was thinking uh, December, we're going to do one the first week in December, and I was thinking, um, uh, no, no, I December forgot. December destruction would be good. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there are no duplicates, so you'll never see the same tip twice. So we're trying to build a catalog of these tips uh, and try to stay up to date on these things. So that, you know, Tom will go and blog about them, we'll speak to them, and, and, and do some other uh, social promotion of those. You get to vote each time. Now, because it might be odd apples versus oranges, Tom might present on a PowerPoint uh, tip, I might then do a OneNote tip. And so they're not equal, but 
you have to then look at those two and say, which is the one that I think is more relevant to me that I prefer? <laughs> Thomas? Are there bribes? Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I call them enhancement inducers. <laughs> now, we say this no hitting below the belt, but we do. So, he can't uh, reach me. I, on the other hand, am a lot easier to hit below the belt. And then we do, we track the metrics of this, which I'll show you. So, the current um, leaderboard, where it stands from our last one. So, this is our eighth time together. Um, but right now, Tom is in the lead on all three metrics. It's been going back and forth. Um, and we've been kind of tied up a few times, and I'll pull ahead, and then you know Tom back there, but he's now to, to, to be fair though, I have to admit here, I kind of freaked him out one event that we had, which was one of our shared uh, Facebook Live ones, mm -hmm. and he calls me about two days before and goes, "I just need to warn you, we've got like a hundred and twenty some odd people signed up for this, like." I may have let everybody in our company who gets my Spark One distribution list items, which is like well over a thousand, and so of course, probably eighty-five percent of the people on the call were people I worked with. He's like, "You bribed them before?" I said, "No, I told them to vote their conscience." That you should in mind that you as many help desk cases that I may get, so you may want to keep that in mind. Slow down the tickets, you know. <laughs> Uh, although I do like to point out that after that one, I won the next one with your people. Yeah, you did. Oh. So anyway, so it's uh, you know, so it, you really just it's up to you to uh, to vote on the ones that you think is is more useful there. And usually, yeah. when we do this kind of thing too, what we'll want is a volunteer to be our vote counter on our official tally board over there. Anybody want to raise their hand? Just, okay, right. thank, awesome. you. thank you. So when we get ready to do the voting, him and I will turn around. He'll say, okay, those of you who blah, 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 you can't put the numbers there, then we turn around. So we try to not to influence it much. Right. Now, the other thing, too, that I should point out is that if, like, my first one, because he's not seen my slides, I've not seen his. If my first one happens to be <coughs> Tom's third, he can't use it. So we have to have backups. Do you have backups? <laughs> so be so the last time or one of the last the, the two the last ones I did not have a backup I and, lost that round and he had done one which well, I had done before well, so I, I duplicated so I lost the round um, and so we've not had you know so we've I, I had one that we both used at the same time no but so I yeah so I caused damage to myself <laughs> by doing that. Um, I would have won that because we were even it was two to two and I lost that one I'm just saying, uh, but you know that's right. <laughs> so, but, so that just to, there, there are some strategies in that as well. But it's a lot of fun. So ultimately, whether I come up with them, if if I show Tom things that he's not seen yet, that eventually it'll sh appear on the blog. That's the point: is to create this catalog of the content around there. So, lots of fun. So Let's gonna, get started. Are you gonna go first this time, yeah. or do I get to go first? No, I'm here presenting. I will go first. Monty freaking dog. <laughs> so here's one, just kind of a basic example, but it's an important one, and I'm seeing, and I'm using this more and more. Bookmarking teams. Okay. I just actually uh, did a. I know that's why I used it, Tom. Okay, good. I pulled from the his first blog. one I used, I was sure you were going to come out with it and was going to bug me. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'll mark this one off as do not use it. Yeah. <laughs> So this is, this is part of my strategy was to go from the blog and things that we've not covered yet that he's already blogged on, and I may have pulled one, maybe two, Ooh. from your blog, so hoping I'm, to get him to stumble. You're, you're like riding my coattails is what you're doing. No, the best thing about this is because Tom's blogged about it. If you vote for me on this one, it's like you're voting for both of us. Because no, he's it is it. not. It, is. it has <laughs> nothing to do with that. No, but this is a, it's a common problem that I've had, we've all had, whether you're using um, Teams, who's using Teams actively in your organization? You can raise your okay, hand. This, I'm not going to call on people. And then round. Yammer, uh, how about Yammer? Active users of Yammer. So the similar problem is that uh, even with all of the, the you know, you're supposed to be able to just go and search and find the stuff and keep up on these threaded discussions. But I heard this complaint with Yammer for a couple of years and immediately saw this problem with Teams. And people said, like, I'm losing the place of where that comment was, that conversation. I need to go back and I'm having to scroll through conversations to find that thing that we were discussing. And so it's, it's a simple concept, 
But this idea of being able to go in there and bookmark an, uh, an important uh, you know, topic. So just in this discussion, and I say, oh, well, here's this comment that Gary made. This is active. One of my uh, clients is just to go over in that, that bookmark tab to go in, select that, and then you go up into your profile and you have saved. So all the saved conversations. You click on that and it takes you to this view where every item that you've bookmarked and you can unbookmark, uncheck it and, and uh, lose that, but immediately jump to that place, to that thread, that conversation. It's in context. You don't lose the rest of the conversation above and below it, but it takes you to where you bookmarked. So that's the critical thing. It would not be sufficient, and, and Yammer did this initially, where it wouldn't take you this, it would take you to the thread, but then you'd still have to go and, and you get lost even within that. Now it takes you back to exactly the thing that you marked in context of that conversation, so you can start up again, follow up on that item, whatever that is, go take that action. So it's a very simple feature, but is I think is, is we, is collaboration in teams, just like in Yammer, is very flat. It's not that structured, like SharePoint tiered system of folders and files to find it. Uh, it it's, you need to have utilities like this and get in the habit of, you know, this is something that I need to come back to and follow up or take an action or read more in depth. Bookmark it, save it so you can more quickly go back to that item so you don't lose that in the conversation. Yeah, and this is, I, I like it too where you can bookmark items where there may be a link in there that you need to go click on and read more information about it. Uh, this could also serve as action items where somebody says, hey, we need to get together and talk with XYZ. I go ahead and flag it and save, and then I know that I've got it in there as a reminder. The only thing that I struggle with, because I do the same thing with bookmarks <laughs> otherwise, is like, I create a really great collection of bookmarks, and then I never go out and do anything with Right. So that, that's a, my so my thought, and and when the, the recording of this is, is live is to the product team, I would love to see as another feature of this, you know, bookmark it or not, but be able to go and actually you you know, you have like the share capability, send something to somebody, but I actually want to create like that action item of to do automated from any one of them. And if you could sync that to like a planner that you have out right. there, that would be like freaking awesome. That would be fantastic. So then you're in context, you're doing that, you can say, create a reminder for myself, send it to Tom with a, you know, you need to read this, you know, whatever that is. Right. That would be fantastic. All right. Okay. Switching over. So bookmarking in Teams versus adding a background, black, that, black, back, background, Blur in Teams. There yep. we go. Um, so a lot of you aren't apparently Teams users yet, but this has gotten a lot of a um, lot of airplay lately, and it's kind of cool. So if you're like Christian, you have a nice clean basement with nice <laughs> clean background and back. You really don't worry about if you're going to share your video with somebody. Um, I'm not like that. <laughs> and the office that I'm in serves as a shared office between my, me and my girlfriend, and I had a table behind me which served as a nice container for clothes and pictures and boxes to unpack and stuff. And so it was kind of like I don't use video a lot because I don't like what's necessarily behind me. I don't think it gives a very professional look. So now what you can do if you're sharing a meeting in Teams, you can do a background blur option which kind of fuzzes all that out, which is really nice. So if you've got your video up here and you have the um, buttons out here that you're normally used to, like you're doing a Skype meeting or something, you click on the ellipsis, which are the three dots there. And when you click on it, you get a pop-up menu that allows you to start your recording and turn off incoming video and stuff. But you also have the option to blur your background. As I said, don't judge about my background because I'm sure you've got problems like that too. But when you blur it, as you see, all that background now becomes somewhat indistinguishable. Now, I will admit, it kind of looks like a really cheap green screen effect yeah. because this dream. <laughs> now, in the dream sequence, we're going to be talking about. <laughs> yeah, that would actually dream sequence would fit me really well with some of the meetings I have. But it's it is nice, and it's also good if you're like in a very busy traffic area and you've got a lot of distractions passing back of you, 
this will help blur that out so people are more focused on you rather than, oh, who just walked across the back? You know, maybe a color blob walked across the back, but that's as much as they're going to be able to do. So I think this is really cool. It was announced at Ignite, wasn't it? Yeah. And I've seen it talked about like five or six different places. Oh my god, there's background blur now, you know? And I'm like, yeah, this is yeah. cool. I didn't think it was all that great, but I think it is nice. If it's you useful. Don't have a clean background. Yeah. For your normal things. Exactly. Uh, and I'll just say that, and I'll show you this when we do it after the next one. It's like, so <coughs> this was my number two. <laughs> I was going to try, because he blogged about it, I was going to try like one, two, but that's it from your list for the live. Well, it, it was funny because when I put this one on here, I thought, I would like to save it in case I need to catch up at the end. Yeah. But I can really see Christian using this one, so I'm going to come out strong with it and see what happens. What's great is that the article that, that uh, features this shows, you know, that guy that was the reporter that was uh, in uh, uh, South Korea? And the kid Korea? comes in. And the kid comes in. So they use that as the example with him just kind of sitting there smiling while the, his wife is grabbing the toddlers and stuff from the room. Just a bunch and of blurs then, down And it blurs it out. Stuff. And it's just, it's fantastic, you know. Yeah. So everybody, everybody's familiar with that one. It's a cool feature. So that's that. So it's it's uh, Teams bookmarking versus Teams meetings background blur. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to vote now. And so just by a show of hands, and we'll count off everybody. So of those two examples, we'll turn around. So oh yeah, that's right. See. So let's we're going to turn around. We don't want to influence anybody. <laughs> yes, we do. So <laughs> how many? So votes for the first one for the bookmark capability. Okay. And then how many for the background blur? Oh, <laughs> I, like, I think I like the sound of that one. I'll find out in about 30 seconds. Aww. <laughs> okay, that one I really didn't like the sound of. I'm sorry, but Christian's going to take this first round. <laughs> yeah, but he's got to adjust for the next one, so that's okay. Yes, all right. Okay. All right, so excellent. So uh, yeah, so we'll and we'll keep the score. So that's you for the first oh, number. Yes, yes, yep. Go right into it. <laughs> well, you definitely. <laughs> yeah. So I, I moved my slide to, to Tom right there. So I've got the example that I'll show it here in a second. Okay. So they can see that. Cool. Um, so inserting multiple lines in a spreadsheet. This is multiple blank lines in a spreadsheet. This is something that I will admit I'm not an Excel guru. And whenever I have to insert blank lines, especially if there are multiple ones, it's like highlight, insert blank, highlight, insert blank. Finally, I get like four or five of them, and then I would copy the blank lines and then insert blank. I just try to keep going, keep going, keep going, but it's like this is a pain. Well, what I found is that while you can use the normal select a line, right click, insert, and then you can get your blank line. What you can do instead, which is really cool, is you can highlight multiple lines. So let's say I want to insert five blank lines. I just highlight five lines of my spreadsheet, doesn't matter what five lines. And then when I do insert, it actually inserts five blank lines. So if I have a spreadsheet that has like 50, 60, 70, 100 lines, whatever, and I need to insert five blank lines, instead of having to do that five times over and over and over again, you can just highlight five, insert, boom, there's my five blank lines I'm running. So that I thought was really cool, even though it's really, really simple. It's been there a long time. It's one of those like just powerful like things that's uh, out there. Like all the, the in fact, uh, so Noah Sparks and I were having a conversation with the, which product team was this? Uh, we just uh, were on a call two days ago um, where we're talking with, and, and the, the product manager, um, <coughs> We're, we're, we do this other interviews of uh, product team members at Microsoft. But anyway, it was, she, she just wanted to highlight not just all the new features, but the, all of this stuff in Excel. She also did some marketing for Excel. All these other features said, yeah, we try to do that on a regular basis. I think when Tom and I talk about a lot of these things, we try to you know, say, and all, there's also these other things. So it's uh, it, this is one of those just quick you know, capabilities that's I think it's really important if you're in using Excel a lot. Well, and what's interesting too is there's nothing that would lead you to know that you can do that. Right. Because it's just highlight, insert, row. But how would I know that I can highlight more than that and get more inserted? Um, and that's another thing I love about these tips is good and bad. At the company, it's like, 
oh, you're the guru on all things office. I'm like, no, I'm really not. Um, and I'm the SharePoint person, but people are like, can you help me with mail merge? I'm like, no, I can't. Um, but I can get these tips from anywhere. And the next one that I'm going to do is one that I was in a training session. The trainer did this. I'm like, whoa, I don't care what you're training, but what you just did is really, really cool. Um, and I shared immediately, and people are like, that's awesome. I never knew you could do that. That changes everything. I'm like, okay, fine. You know, the only place I've seen this kind of stuff is that uh, some vendors that occasionally hand out like these. Uh, you cheat know, sheets. Uh, like cheat sheets and all the, 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 the quick tips of the, the, the uh, you know, the keyboard, you know, quick thing. So some of these aren't even keyboard tips; they wouldn't right. even be there. Right. So, all right, jumping over. I was going to show you this real quick. So this was my. I moved it. So number two, there's the example there. Presentation's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah. So anyway, so that's the that's that one. So that was my. Right, so you know, round two item. So mine is the, uh, this is just a great new feature. We, Tom and I talk a lot about um, uh, the, um, you know, the capabilities that are cloud enabled. So if you're still, is anybody still just 100% on-prem? So a couple, a couple hands out there. So, I mean, a lot of the things that you see out on the Office blog, the new features are really cloud enabled, whether it's hybrid or Office 365 specifically. Now, while our focus of this is Office 365 productivity, we've had a mixture of those things, which are Office Suite, and there's even capabilities within the desktop applications that are kind of lit up or that are extended uh, you know, capabilities based on uh, the cloud features. So there's a lot of this artificial intelligence driven, like intelligent application stuff that's out there that's just fantastic. This is a great example of this, and what this is, so that if so, like myself, I'm I'm actually going through writing a white paper for Microsoft right now, and, and writing and, and writing, writing and ongoing. And writing. No, not writing. <laughs> review, waiting for legal review, waiting for legal to sign off. Um, but with that process, like a lot of people, we do. If you go in and edit with Word, you add in notes, like remind yourself to go back and review something, or insert a new link, or update this text, so you, you, you do that when you're editing Word Doc. So now you have this, basically this ability to go in and, and automatically add these to-do reminders. Like there's so much more that's happening with PowerPoint and Word and that you can dynamically link it to outside content. The content's updated here, it automatically, the references update within Word. Like you've had that in Word for a decade or more you know, the references, updates, and be able to link to things. And those, has anybody used that in depth, those kind of references, updates, you know, can be kind of clunky. And sometimes it updates the way it should, other times it doesn't. But this capability of being able to create the to-dos and tasks and reminders based on those to-dos is new. So you can go in, like this example, finish the section of, and then by this date, and create those reminders to yourself. So there's a lot of text here, it's meant so you'll be able to get all the slides and see these and click on the links and things around this. Um, but a lot of this, you can actually, because of the, again, cloud enabled, the at mentions, so you can create a to-do in the document that you're co-editing with somebody, at mention them and do the notifications that way as well. Uh, so it's really powerful, so to be able to go in and see a list of all the tasks that I need to do to finish this document because of this. And hey, I've got three things that I've signed to Tom, Tom's not responded on yet in this document, and he needs to go in there and do. So where in the ribbon bar would you have gone to get that site? So because this is um, currently in preview, it's not out there for everybody, so um, I have not played with it okay. yet on that. So this is something, though, when I saw it, I just kind of went, <gasps> Yeah, I, I, mean, I feel better because I'm looking at it going, wow, that's a game changer. How could you ever seen this? Because like, we, right, it's brand new. So okay. this was talked about at Ignite, uh, so I think it was actually discussed um, in early September uh, that it was forthcoming. So if you're, is anybody an Office Insider? If you want to get advanced preview of this stuff, you can sign up for the Office Insiders program. 
And it, like me, I went and signed up at Inspire, so the, the partner event in Vegas in July. Uh, you know, I don't know why I wasn't already on this, but I went and signed <laughs> up for it, and they sent me Office Insider socks just for signing up. So, well, I don't know, because I, I asked for them. They sent them to me. Well, yeah. uh, but, but you're Christian, too. It, religion doesn't have anything to do with Tom on your <laughs> so, But this is a, so Tom and I have talked a lot about the automation in like OneNote with tasks and to-dos. And it's just cool to see these kinds of features being automated across the rest of the suite. So you're probably guessing what, maybe Q1, Q2, 2019? Um, probably. Yeah, it'll be it'll be H1. It'll be the first half. But okay. yeah. That is cool. That is really cool. All right. So we're ready to vote again. And we'll turn our backs. So take a tally of we'll vote on Tom's first and adding blank rows to Excel. Okay. And then votes for my tip on the to-dos in Word. Keep in mind that you can't see it yet. <laughs> it's AI. It's smarter than all of us, Tom. <laughs> don't upset the AI. I don't want to Wait, upset. I'm doing a recount on this one. It's too close to call. <laughs> Yay! It's a midterm tip. Is this ties are first? fine. We can have ties. Oh, Christian, you took oh, one goal. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> this no does worries. not bode well for the rest of the time. <laughs> All right, so let's jump to round yeah, three. That was <clears throat> any, any questions about what you've seen so far? Like, because it, make this interactive. If you've got questions about this or how it would fit within your org, or be, if you're in a version, you're not sure if it's relevant. Yes. Still don't know if I want the insider. How would I find that? Is it in the review? If you've not signed up for it, then I mean, you're. But how would I? See How that you're part of it. You would know that you went and signed up for that. No, so I mean, she's asking how to go sign up. For oh, how? No, I'm not oh. asking how to. What happens inside the office inside a program that would I, let you know that? Is it in the review of the so then you, ribbon you, or what? No, no. So so then you would so you have to it's, you go and sign up and you get more information about the program and what it entails and what the requirements are for that. But it would basically, as in the admin experience in Office 365, it would show that you are on an early ring, so that Office Insider ring, so you would get see features beforehand. So it actually, you can go in there in the administration experience and you can see um, you know, that your tenant, your, your system is part of that early preview period. So would they so probably been sending, they would probably be sending you information that on a regular say, basis. Hey, here are right. the things that have been rolled out to early release. You know, here you've got this tip. Here's where you'd find it. Right. And so I get e exactly. I get email saying, "Hey, Office Insider uh, update. We've got this coming out now, or this will be available next month." And so, like on a monthly basis, you get those notifications. Are you saying where do I click to turn that on, though? Is yes. that your question? Thank you. Yes. Asking, where do I click to turn that on if I'm already in it? If I had it. If I had it. Yeah, I think it's in your if you like have know, an in your Office 365 admin client. I think. Can't you specify what release level you're on, whether, you know, bleeding edge or... So my tenant's not yet enabled, so I don't know the answer to the question of where it appears within that. Oh. So it's in the admin experience. You have to go and enable it. But I, it, I think in the article that I link to, it tells you where it is, but you know, I went and looked for it and still didn't see it. Yes. Even though I'm on the Office Insiders, like this just was announced like a month ago and they're starting to roll that out and I've just not seen it on mine yet. Well and I think too in your Office 365 you know admin panel and you've got all the people who have accounts I could be on an early release while the rest of my company is on the normal one so I would be seeing stuff come out a lot faster I'd be going hey everybody look at this and they're like I don't know what you're talking about. So you think it'll be an update to uh, Word to the Office? That yes. At some point, the whole yes, thing changes, yeah. and that would be included. Yeah. They're going to harden it. And yeah, it'll be live, and everybody will get it. How many people use um, OCR software? How's the experience of using OCR? <laughs> what does OCR stand for? Uh, so, what is it? Uh, Optical error Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, it's it, it's one of those things. There's vendors that have been out there for many, many years. In fact, a lot of the uh, in the migration space in SharePoint, there were vendors that did mass quantities or services that you can send, you know, crates of paperwork and that they will OCR stuff, 
snap images, put it on microfiche, or convert it over into oh, files. Of, well, I, I just, it's still out there. Yeah, I know it is. And, uh, and, and, but, or convert that into digital media that you can then upload into SharePoint. So I'm familiar with it from that standpoint. Um, and then of course you have technology that for years is you can scan in like receipts and things and it will go in and pull some of that data together. Office Lens does that really well. So here's something that is relatively new that's very cool that's along those lines is inserting data from a picture into Excel. Wow. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so right I now let me just I'll, let, me, this let me talk about that. <laughs> so here, let me just preface this by saying that um, Right now, it's just an Android app that's being made available. So it's like, it's not even officially in preview yet. It's supposed, it's supposed to have been out. It should be before the end of the calendar year, but there's no yet, that app that I've seen posted, I went looking um, for the iOS just to see if that's out there yet. Um, but again, you could go and this, the, just the concept of this, of take a picture of of something that has data within it and that it OCRs and it captures it and then dumps it into Excel is pretty incredible. Uh -huh. Like how many times I've gone and like been reading an article or a report and seeing something and gone and then tried to find that table and I find myself like entering data to try to recreate this great stat or table around there to be able to snap a photo of that and that apply it within Excel and then be able to manipulate that instantly is pretty incredible. It's very, again, it's AI driven, it's very advanced, it's brand new, it's not yet available for any of this, but this is a great, another great example of what Microsoft is trying to do to improve productivity and is leveraging the power of uh, AI in the cloud to, to enable this, this feature. As much as I would want to rag on you for True, having yeah. a tip out there that is only for an Android Android mobile phone, I can't use it because I have an Apple. I'm sorry, that is really freaking cool. I am, I, I am excited about this yeah. capability. Well, and I'm, I'm sure they're going to get it out to iPhones, and I would assume at some point, much like Office Lens, that will then translate downward. Right. Okay. This is it kind of is like a theme if you've seen any of our other recordings. By the way, in all of our recordings, every one that we do, like this one, I'll put the video out there. I'm actually going to go in and then add the actual slides, of the, the video out on YouTube as well, so we don't have to go do a Yeah, usually, usually, usually we do yeah. a re-recording of this to the slides so we can then post it out. I'm just going to use this raw footage so you see us live in action. Uh, and then I'll put the slides in there as well. But we do uh, all this content. The other, the other seven that we've done are all out on YouTube and are available. So let me switch this over to Tom's. Wow. And I, it's really tough because this one I think is really cool and life changing, and I just don't think I could compete with what you just did. <laughs> this was the one where I was in a training session, and they were training us on because we're just rolling out Office 365, and they were training on. SharePoint Online or something like that. They showed this and went, whoa, stop, time out, this is cool. And this is using Excel flash fill on names. And I'm used to seeing flash fill where you've got a sequence of numbers or something or dates and you drag it down and it fills in the sequencing of dates. Yeah, that's great. But what she did on this one, which blew me away, she had a table and she had full names here. So first name, last name, no big deal. <clears throat> and then there were columns for first name and last name. Now normally, you would have to do some sort of Excel formula to strip out. It's like, oh, count me out. I don't do those things. However, what she showed is she put my name in the first, so it would match right here, the first name. And then when she clicked on the second box here and did flash fill up at the top, it knew enough to strip out and copy all the first names. And I'm like, Oh my God, this kid's going out today. <laughs> that was really awesome. And then, just to show that there's no fluke here, she also turned around and took last name, hit flash fill, and filled out all the last name columns. Oh, yeah. Is this, this only in 2016, though? I'm going to say yes, because we're on 2016, but I don't know. Um, that, that's a fairly good that's assumption for that most was, of the stuff. It's like the, yeah. you know, the latest. Yeah. Um, but you should be able to find out. Sometimes you go in there and there are some of these features that are 
backwards compatible at least one version, but it'll say it you know, explicitly within the, the, the documentation of the blog post. It came out in 2013 and it also contains names. Oh, that's even more that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> well, so here's a question for you. Yes. Because sometimes you get a, a mixture of, and it'll be first name, last name, but you have other data where it, there might have like a comma in some of them, or it might be last name and first name on some of the entries. Is it intelligent enough to see the differences there? Don't know. I was, That'd be interesting. I, I was just blown away at just this level right here, where it could take basically a you know a field with two string values, basically delimited by a space, mm -hmm. and know enough to split them out into two different columns using flash fill. Cool. So I thought that was like wow, game changer. And all my people that I sent this out to, which is like twelve hundred people internally, I probably got more comments on this one. Than just about any other tip I've ever I would think that. because there's the, the logic behind this. I mean, so I don't know how many people have, you know, like, uh, so I was an Excel user back when it had its proprietary macro language and I learned that. <laughs> and so when it kind of modernized and switched to VB based and I lost all of my expertise uh, in that, it, it changed things around. But you are usually able to go in with a feature like that and add in some code on GitHub and go play with right. to find those other exceptions and use another example. If it has like Duff comma Tom, in that case, it does this when it's Tom Duff, but when it's in that other scenario, yeah, that other situation, it, 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 yeah. it recognizes that. But yeah. Or if we had a middle initial. Or if we had a middle initial right. or a Dan Dusen or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. Do you take that? second word and call that the end of it or do you say everything after that first space to the right becomes the last name? I don't know that. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Just hope that you don't run into somebody named Van Duff Van Dusen. <laughs> and the problem that would be what? <laughs> okay. All right. So Let's round three. On. So round three. So we're, it's the um, picture to Excel OCR versus the well, I think we should add five just to Tom because his is actually live now. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. So we, we needed someone new to. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't. Okay, for Christian, go ahead. One that's not available yet. <laughs> Haters gonna hate. And I did not cheat on this, Tom, but you took it. What are you talking about you didn't cheat on it? You stopped it by cheating! <laughs> Even if the five votes were real, you wouldn't have gotten it. Congratulations. Thank you. Especially considering I really thought I was blasted after you showed yours. No, it's it's uh, I completely fair. Like we've, we've done this a couple times where we had stuff that was very advanced. It's like, you know what, I just want to put it out there and it's, it's a cool feature, but you know, it then could go live and we find tons of reasons to hate it. There's things wrong with it and not work. But. Probably the funniest one that I loved was the first time that I included all the people that I work with in the notification. They all piled in. So we were, I think yours is, was limited to 100 people. So I think I had like 93 of them out there were my coworkers. And he leads off with a tip on Delve. I'm like, my people aren't on Office 65. They're not going to know what you're talking about. And I think I won that round like, you know, 75 to 4. <laughs> so this one is one that's been out there for a long time, but it's one that seems to be overlooked. And it's one that I forget about a lot of times. But if you're doing searching for mail and depending on how much mail you have in your mailbox, that could be really a big thing. What you a lot of times need to do is try to filter down your search options. And so what you can do is use this feature that usually resides on the tail end of your uh, ribbon bar here called filter email. And when you look at this, there are some pre-canned searches out here. So I only want to see unread messages, or I only want to see things that have attachments, or things that were just sent to me or CC'd me. So you can go ahead and select that option and what's nice is once you click that select your options, it actually changes the search bar at the top and uses the has attachments keyword set to yes. And now all the options I see, or all the um, emails that I see, are only things that have attachments in there. So that can be great if I'm trying to go back over four or five months 
because God, they sent me this PowerPoint presentation, and I store an email because it's just what I do, and I can't find it. So that's a really good option. Plus, you could then go out there and possibly put your boss's name. So now you're only getting things that came from your boss that have attachments. And now instead of going through 10,000 emails trying to look for attachments, you're maybe going to see five things that had your boss that was copied on it. Very simple, very straightforward. And that same search toolbar, like if you put a company's name in because you knew that you got an email from a certain company, you don't find yes. all the ones for that company. Yeah. So I it's, love that feature. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a great pre-filter to get you information a lot quicker instead of trying to be the search expert to come up with all the you know, black art keywords that you want. What about those attachments that somehow embed themselves in the email and doesn't provide you with the attached file as a general attachment where to pull up that information? We don't talk about things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think so because I think it's basically going off of the has attachments indicator that's set on the email. Okay. I could be wrong, but I would say that if somebody has done that to you, yes. and I use those words exactly as I meant them, <laughs> if they send you something like that and it doesn't have the indicator here, then no, it's not going to grab it. Because this is actually a field in your mail item that it can trigger on. So I hate when they do that too. <laughs> All right, so this one is, uh, so it's an item that uh, we've talked about a couple times, but there's new capabilities. <laughs> so um, how many people have played with the new uh, desktop inking capabilities? Is anybody on Windows 10? Then you have inking capabilities. So down at the bottom right in the tr system tray, there's the little pen, the drawing, the little inking thing, and there's a ton of new capability that's He's coming. done a number of tips that on Because they keep adding really to it. Cool. It's some really cool stuff. Like, like one of the things that, like, uh, it's one of the favorites that I've used constantly is your ability to go and basically take a snapshot of your desktop and right there being able to draw things. So it's, it turns your desktop, what you're sharing with a coworker or in a meeting or a webinar, into instantly a whiteboard right there. So you can highlight things and draw all over the place like there and then capture and save that image and share that out in notes later. I mean, really cool stuff like that. One of the first ones you ever did with inking was in OneNote, he could go out with his pen in a blank OneNote page, write a- uh, An equation. An equation of some sort, five plus three equals, and it would recognize that, change it into an actual equation and give him the answer. So, it was like, whoa. So that, something that actually, so my daughter went in, so she's in grad school here at the University of Minnesota, uh, 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 and she uh, is, she went out before she started a program. She's, uh, uh, so she's in her, yeah, so she's in her second year now. Um, and she went out and bought a new uh, Surface Pro 2 or 3 or whatever, it's, I don't know. She, it's nicer than mine, so it's a three or, <laughs> three or four. Uh, anyway, but she extensively uses the pen and writes stuff. So it was actually, she's the one who found that. She's like, hey, I didn't know that it did this, and it was as good at this. So she's writing equations and saying, she was a microbiology major, so she's good at math and science and stuff. And so she was doing something very complex, and she then exploring around, and then it converted it all into text. And she was like, wow. So she built equations, they're drawing stuff out, erasing things, going back, and writing them, and then putting them, dumping them over into Excel. Very cool stuff. So the latest capability uh, is that you have this, again, AI powered um, to go in there. So you can go in there, and in this example, so this is a graphic, it's just a picture that somebody had done this artistic lettering around that, and actually went in and selected the text that was in the image, converted it into the PowerPoint, the text that you can then modify, leaving the picture in the background. So it's smart enough to go and separate. Do you ever do the remove background yeah. and edit that kind of stuff? Like I would do this if there's text but an image that I want to use, but I wanted to have the PowerPoint text so I can manipulate and move that around, and I'd use that, that remove background. This does that in an automated fashion, pulls it, and then and transforms that into the PowerPoint text, and then has all the formatting capabilities. 
Yep, was there a question? Yeah. I saw this in, in OneNote. So you're saying this is available on all Microsoft programs? So it's they're talking about it for um, Word and PowerPoint being extended from OneNote. Yeah, so this was, I, I mean, it's probably, it was started in OneNote and they've now extended yeah, it over there. So do the OCR yes. stuff, right. which was really cool. Cheap OCR is what I kind of refer to it as, but this is so, and there's more around it. They talk about the article that's linked there too about um, using it with the 3D model stuff. And I've not gone to explore. There's other features that are also new to the inking around that. But I've just not gone and played much with the like the 3D paint and capabilities and some of the new stuff. So some of it is surfaced within that 3D paint. Um, I'm still old school, and I'll do quick edits just in paint uh, to images. But uh, you know, this is just incredibly powerful. Again, so you're not having to go and, uh, and, and spend all of that time to adjust those images right. and convert that text. It does that in an automated fashion. And I'm assuming much unlike most of what you've already It's actually seen. available. There Correct. you go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> is this online or? The so it's all, anything that says AI powered has to have an online component to it. Okay. Now some features will, even if you're on-prem, if you've got the latest version of the Office Suite, it'll go and utilize some of those things. But just be realized that if you're on-prem, um, that your organization may have some of that ability to go out to the cloud, even in desktop apps, limited or turned off. And yeah, admins have the ability to do that. Yeah, so and it might be that it's, because this is all brand new, really since it's out there, they're rolling it out. Uh, there's, there's stuff that's generally available, but you still have to wait for your tenants to be deployed for those things. That's another reason to be on like the Office Insiders or to, to get those early views of that new capability. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really struggle with in our company is with a lot of the, the Office software because it interacts with other stuff that they've done for years, maybe the other software isn't yet compatible with Office 2016. So for just the office things like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, we're on like the delayed release. So we're like six months behind. Right. So a lot of this stuff we don't see right away. On the other hand, I had been told that all of our stuff was like that. And like, we're just starting a migration of SharePoint 2010 to SharePoint Online. And I really want some of the SharePoint Online. We have everything else turned on to general release. So we're kind of keeping up with that, but things like this I probably won't see for another three or four months. Does anybody know how long you can delay um, this? Is, is it up to a year? Is it six months? I think it's. it's I know not we've got six months. There may be one other setting. It, I think it, I think it is six months the max because there's it, you'll start running into problems yeah. when our group is really risk adverse on this. Uh, kind but there, of but that's actually a fairly common thing, and I think it's look. There's good and bad things to that because. Yeah. Um, sometimes there's so much that's being released that it can be overwhelming for your admin, for your IT team, just to keep up and make sure that they're aware of and you know don't see other issues that come up from that. Um, but then the downside to that is that you know you see stuff and a lot of the new capabilities build on what came out three, four months before. If you don't have access to those, you're going to see layers that you don't have access to. All right, so, with that. I must admit, that one is really cool. Yeah, um, I'm a huge fan of the inking stuff. I use that almost every day, some aspect of that. If you've not yet played with that, definitely go. Uh, okay, and Tom first time. on this one? Sure, why not? <laughs> It'll be a shorter count. <laughs> Hands up high, people. Can I just put everyone else? No, we do actually get in number because he likes to count number of votes, too. That's the only. That's one of the stats. That's the only stat I may hold when we get done here. <laughs> Might have missed one person on that. Oh wow. wow, dude! So I might might erase some of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think some people aren't voting here. No, I'm yes, and that, and that does happen sometimes too, and that that's part of what we track, and uh, it is the total number of votes is one of the three stats that we do. So. And since I tend to stuff the ballot. <laughs> so what we've seen right here, so with me winning three rounds so far, that means we're back to a tie for the number of events won uh, in total. So Rounds is going to be really close, too, because we've been going back and forth. A lot of our ones are three twos. Yeah. Okay. All right. Get your last one. And the last one. 
So this is uh, incredible. Uh, if you're, um, uh, this is something that um, uh, one resource. I forgot to put the link here, but I'll share out there. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, Noah Sparks, who is a former uh, MVP, um, works for a training company called Brainstorm. If anybody's um, familiar with them, um, but we did an interview. One of we do it. We have a new series where we interview the product teams. We've done two episodes. The first one we did with the Yammer team, the second one with the Stream team. Uh, and so we actually have like a 40 minute video where they're demoing a bunch of the new capabilities and talking about what Stream does. So that if you go out to YouTube and do hashtag loop365, um, you'll be able to find that video that walks through and talks about this. So is there anybody using Stream today? If you're not yet, so essentially what this is, is Microsoft has gone in and upgraded their video technology within the platform. So anybody using the Office 365 video platform? So that is being displaced by now Stream, which is across workloads. And part of what Stream does, when you go and you add it up there, so it's that, you know, the enterprise YouTube kind of thing, um, it, it allows you to securely store the content but automatically transcribes and makes searchable your video content. And does closed captioning as part of that transcript. Correct. And what's not the, yet there automatically, but the ability is there because of the Skype translation services is the translation of this as well. Because it will do English and Spanish right now, and they're looking at rolling it out to additional languages. Yeah, and if you're there, I'd like I could go and talk about, I'll probably, well, I'll need to add, we've not yet talked about some of the translation services, some of the capabilities that you can do for live broadcasts as well as um, conversations, uh, just, you know, two people. <coughs> so just, this is just a, you know, link to this and talk about it. You've got the, the you know, the versions of it that, uh, where this is available. So it, uh, it, what it does is, because video is growing so rapidly, not just as a preferred format for consuming complex data. It's a knowledge asset that organizations are woefully underperforming on tracking, capturing, and enabling through the rest of their content. Uh, I always use the example of uh, when I went to work for years ago for Pacific Bell, so in the uh, mid-90s, um, my first week was the last week of this other employee and I was taking over some of his business process and he was retiring. It's one of those people who had like an 800 square foot cottage in Palo Alto that they bought in like 68 it's not worth and they million. sold it for like 1.2 million dollars <laughs> just crazy um, so he we retired so I was uh, my first week there they handed me a binder and said here's all the things that you need to know and I'd like flip through and I'd be like yeah I've got questions and they're like well you need to read the binder it's like I've read the binder that's why I still I have, have questions, questions. <laughs> you know and, and so I would go and I and so the, this guy who would provide a lot of this documentation and he's like, well, the process flow is in there. I was like, yeah, I'm looking at it. I still don't understand. And he's like, well, I'm documented. I'm looking at the notes. I'm like, yeah, I still don't understand what, how this works. And so then he would sit there and explain. I'm taking copious notes, uh, you know, annotating his flows. I'm like, there's so much that you've left out of that. And so over the years, there's a number of people I've run into. Paul Colmsey is, uh, is a, a, an example of uh, somebody who is a you know, knowledge management professional based in Australia that is a uh, you know, business analyst uh, expert in you know the, in the field, and and talks about the loss of knowledge because it's all of the it's the undocumented. We have a process flow. We have a list of bullets of what to do around the flow. And yeah, but all the really knowledge happens. is around that, <laughs> and so you take notes around that. But we use video now increasingly to fill in the gaps there. So you see the flow, you read the documentation, but you also have the video where the person may give you examples and answer questions around that. And what's great about this is that you capture that video, the transcription, it's instantly searchable, it's a knowledge asset, so you can access the video as well as the conversation. So what's the margin of error on the transcription? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, right. It's like like anything around that, and it gets intelligent over time. It learns about as you know the AI. It's and all the machine learning learns about your acronyms, the you know the the, the colloquialisms that you use in your organization. Regional dialects, and regional dialects around that. To yeah, capture. I tend to pause a lot when I'm talking. I'll pause. It's in the middle of a sentence. It loves putting periods in the middle of my sentences now. <laughs> yeah. it, I mean, a great example, though, where Microsoft is thinking about those exact problems 
If you go and look at that video, it's been demoed a couple times. Uh, it was at Build where they did the future of meetings, and it's the live interaction of four people that are cross-talking and all this, and uh, it, it, it's, the AI is correctly seeing the interruptions and still pulling the full transcript and because it's seeing it and it's already identified, this is Tom, this is Christian, it will say as we talk over each other, you know, it'll interrupt and with my comment and then continue with Tom's and recognize the differences. So that's part of like, they're trying to solve those kinds of yeah. real world problems. Does this work with like WebEx tools or anything like that? I know a lot of our vendors also put their video content online. So through their that's a great question. So, so here, here's the thing. So this is actually one of my complaints in general. They're trying to solve this. Is that when you're recording it straight in, you're capturing it within Teams, or it's you know directly in through stream, and it's happening in live because there's a there's a live factor to that. It does it correctly. My problem has been why can't I take? It's the same technology, MP4. This conversation, whether it's a podcast or whatever. You know, why can't it just take that audio? Why does it have to sit there and transcribe my voice? Can I put a tape player right, right next to the microphone and do that? Like, yeah, and it works that way, but then why can't it just upload the file format? So there are some quirks around that, but micro, again, that's one of those things where they are trying to look at the output formats of those files and be able to do the same thing. So if it's an MP4, it's an MP4. It shouldn't matter. If it's an a AVI file, it, you know, it should be, it's a video file, it should be able to take it, transcribe it, and publish it. Yeah, when you upload a video to stream, <clears throat> part of what it does once it gets up there is it will do the transcription file for closed captioning. So I can be on a Skype call for an hour, I get the video, I upload it to stream, it uploads really, really fast, and then about five minutes later, I'll get an email that says, your video is ready. And closed captioning is available shortly thereafter. Uh, and all that's automatic. Now granted, going back to your question, I don't think that's exactly what I said in that video, but that's what the captioning thinks I said. It's not bad, but I know- You still have to go in and manually check and yeah. you'll clean up as um, the author of that. I mean, that's just, again, as it's learning. But what was really interesting though, is not Ignite this last year, because I didn't go over the year prior to that, they were doing real-time closed captioning of every session that was given. And so I'm sitting there watching the closed captioning going on, I'm like, this is pretty dead on, regardless of the accents, how many people were speaking, it was nailing it. So it's, that was two years ago, so I'm even sure it's gotten better. Um, one thing that I wanted to ask, because I asked Ryan this yesterday, this piece up here, uh, because I was thinking this was going to be part and parcel of my search when I uploaded videos, he said this is like an E5. And they're looking at bringing it down to like E3 and lower levels, but I don't have this right now, even though I love stream and we are starting to use it really, really extensively. Yeah, that's, uh, again, there's always the, that caveat of uh, checking the versions of, of some of these pieces. Um, you know, so that's, uh, so a lot of that capability, they, like you can have it with E1 or E3 with an additional license yeah. around that. And, and part of my skewed view of a lot of these things is because as an MVP, we get stuff for free. You don't I, you know, and not, So I have to go and sometimes check on the version if I'm just not aware because we just get everything turned on. And get access to all that stuff. But I would but, highly recommend if you've got Stream and you haven't looked into it, really look into it. I went to the SharePoint conference this last year, and I was in a session where they were talking about Stream versus um, Office Video. It was like, it doesn't do this, it doesn't do this. The cash talking. This. Yeah, it was just like, when he got done, I'm like, why would I want to roll this out? There's all these things. This is a half-baked solution. Yeah. And it was I a process. Came, yeah, and I came, I came back and I'm like, we don't want to deal with this yet, people. Yeah. We'll just continue using our non-Microsoft platform, which is even more clunky. Yeah. And then I started to look at it, and it dawned on me that I think I was focusing so much on what it didn't do, as opposed to what it did do. And at that point, I'm like, oh, we can really use this. And it has, it's been like a game changer. People are like, oh my god, we love this. 
Yeah. And people are just uploading videos all on their own now. I don't have to get so Microsoft is now that not talking about Office 365 video at all. It's all about stream. Uh, it, I, again, I would highly recommend for the latest um, to, to understand what stream, what is out there and available. Go to, go to YouTube and do a search for Loop 365. You'll find Noah and I talking with the product team around that and uh, get you that update. And my last one is finding the keyboards for Microsoft Teams. Now, we don't have a lot of team choosers here, so this is probably going to go whoosh, and you're going to take the last round, too. <laughs> but one of the well, things- you're talking about technology that nobody has yet? <laughs> <laughs> Point well taken. I will take that one. Five um, points to Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> Slytherin top. <laughs> and I'm still one of those strange people who haven't read through the entire series yet. <sighs> Ooh, five, I love that. Another five points to Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had people threaten to revoke my geek card. Um, Have you seen the Star Wars movies, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> How is that the guy in the funny helmet that walks around? Yeah, I have seen those. <laughs> Most of them. Uh, so, we rolled out Teams, and Teams is really great. People are really liking it. But we also have a large Slack contingent in our company. And Teams and Slack, Teams was basically Microsoft's Slack killer. Um, but much like many tech people in the world, you give them a tool, they get used to it, and all of a sudden it becomes this religious war that I'm never letting go of my tech tool, and all other tech tools suck that do the same thing. Like Lotus Notes. <laughs> I cut my teeth on Lotus Notes. That was a big deal in the Lotus Notes community. Sorry. I still have a soft spot for it, kind of. I hate Microsoft or uh, IBM. You know, this here? That's, on, that's being recorded. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> I hate Microsoft or I hate IBM. Um, so one of the things that we got a lot of questions with on Teams was people going, well, how do I know what commands I have that I can use up here in the command bar? Or what are my keyboard shortcuts? Well, one of the ways that you can do that is if you place your cursor in the search bar at the top here, and you do Alt Slash, what that ends up giving you is a list. It's a pop-up screen. And it's probably not very viewable because of my text. But it gives you the pop-up screen. It gives you all the different shortcuts that you can do out there, keyboard shortcuts. And for a lot of our tech people, this is like, oh my god, this is like, what we need. There's still a lot of people who don't want to give up Slack, but at least this is helping them get used to certain keyboard shortcuts that they can do more quickly than having to go and hunt things in the uh, user interface. And at the very end here, you see where it says, see shortcuts for all platforms. So Teams, like most of Office 365, has a browser component, but it also has a Teams client. And in most cases, when you're talking about a client versus browser, the client is much more full-featured and enables you to do some things better and do some things, period, that you can't do on the browser. But if you click that C shortcuts for all platforms, it takes you out to that link up there. And this actually gives you the keyboard shortcuts both for the desktop application and for the browser. So if you're used to doing browser-based teamwork, this is where you want to go to find out how you can do keyboard shortcuts for things, as opposed to the keyboard shortcuts that might only be applicable to the Teams client. But this has really helped some of the users who are keyboard people. I tend to be a mouse person, so. And I think there's something similar. There's like a, a way to get to shortcuts in Yammer as well and some of the other, yeah. the other tools. So it's, it's, it's just a matter of you know, knowing how to access that information, get yeah. to that. And make it easy that you're going to go out there and learn the three or four or five that are going to make a huge difference for you. Right. You know, exactly. So. All right, so the last round of voting. So we have the stream transcription versus the unavailable teams. <laughs> it's available, Tom. Ish. Okay, let's do Christian first this time. Yep. Can you put your hot hands up higher, Tom? <laughs> I just want to, this is a boring one, this is pretty close. Wow, a lot of people voting for something that they don't have access to. Tom, what's going on? Sympathy vote, what would you say? Yeah. I think they're just going for the sheer personality of the person. That's true. Okay. Well, I'm not sure exactly how we've gotten multiple different... I don't numbers. care. Mine starts with a two. I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, Tom, you can take the last round. Thank you very much for your support. Both happy for us. We appreciate it.
Overall winner though, three to two. Oh. He will update the stats and make them abundantly clear when we the video comes out. There we go. The stats updated, but as Tom and I said, we're going to be doing this again. We're going to do a webinar that'll be happening without the barrier of the 100. Fix that with yes. Zoom. Um, so we'll be publishing that out there. We'll be doing this again with 10 new tips. That'll be like the first week in December. We'll do it again. So yeah, if you uh, follow us on Twitter uh, using our tags there, or if you look at either of us up on Facebook, you'll see us there. We usually pre-advertise this. And we're looking for the first week in December. We usually do it about nine o'clock ish Pacific time, eight o'clock Pacific time thereabouts, and it's a one hour, five versus five, same format. Uh, exactly. You don't have to see our faces, but you get to vote automatically, and I tend to push on the bottom of the Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for coming Thank today. You. Have a great rest of the event.